Hello everyone. Welcome back to our service dog articles. So I am your host, Caitlin Bird. You can find me on all the socials. I'll tell you that at the end. But let's get into the article. This is a fantastic article. Trainers see a rise in fake service dogs. What do genuine helping canines do? And it's not often that I find an article with an accompanying video that actually gets things right. So if you are here to learn more about service dogs, what they do, what's the difference between an emotional support animal, a service dog, and a therapy dog, buckle in, let's go. Give me Working dogs come in many shapes and sizes, and sometimes, or oftentimes, have very specific jobs. But with the increase of folks purchasing fake vests, licenses, and certifications, it may be hard to spot a real service dog from a fake one. Go chime in here, because I train service dogs. I do get inquiries from people finding me on Google Maps. that are looking simply to get their dog certified. They want me to hand them a piece of paper and say, you can take your dog anywhere. And I have to pop their bubble and actually do some education, if they're even interested in the education. Um, because these are the kinds of people that don't understand and have not done the individual research on what is required because sometimes these are people who may actually have a legitimate need, but they just don't have the education or the awareness to do things the way that they need to be done. So I always like to assume people's best intentions up front unless they are giving me reason not to trust them, which can also happen as well. So, Nixon Norman spoke with two local trainers about the differences among working dogs. You have people who go online and buy a vest that says a service dog, and you have people walking into stores with dogs. Not just service dogs, not just with that, but people will buy packages for like $200 online that even just says ESA on the side, and they bring their dog into Walmart. Very um, precarious situation you're putting yourself in, especially if I see you doing that. <laughs> Just letting you know. <laughs> dogs who are inappropriate, who are barking, who may defecate, who do all kinds of things that a service dog would never do. Before I tell you more about why purchasing and using fake vests and certifications is wrong, here are the very basic differences between the main types of working dogs. There's service dogs, there's emotional support dogs, and then there's therapy slash um, facility dogs. With the main difference being training. Well, that and where a specific type of working dog can and cannot go. Training requirements are very different between the three groups. Emotional support dogs need no training. They don't really have any legal rights other than lodging. Therapy dogs belong to a person and they are trained and they visit in hospitals, rehab centers, schools. Service dogs whole nother category. They require, usually it's anywhere from a year and a half to two years of training. Um, they're trained to do specific tasks for a person's specific disability, and they're very hard to come by. When people try to pass off their un... So you heard it right there. They gave a great brief explanation of each of the kinds of working civilian type dogs. ESA, which really the only legal rights they have are with housing some transportation. That's been changing too. The DOT has been changing that law. Uh, they changed it early last year in January. I remember when it came out. We did some videos on that uh, last year. And um, that's basically it, right? Again, they don't require any training. Those ESAs, nope. You got very limited rights for those because they are just pets. They are just a prescribed pet. And then of course you have therapy dogs, or as the woman was saying, slash facility dogs, which really does require, it's kind of moderate 
middle level of the road for training requirements. They need to do some basics. They can't be rude, can't be jumping up on people, pottying in public, those kinds of things. Um, and they provide emotional support for a larger group of people and or in a facility. Great. Sometimes people will take their dogs to places that maybe they had a major hurricane and they need people need to, to shelters and people need that extra emotional support. Maybe they lost their own pets in a hurricane. Maybe they'll take them to senior facilities or hospitals or childcare, right? So there are specific groups that organize these meetings and these um, visits for the dogs they've already pre-screened and pre-trained to get into these therapy programs. And of course, the last one, which requires the most amount of training and the most amount of forethought, that's key too, forethought, is a service dog. And when I say it requires a lot of forethought is um, that the majority of people who come to me that already have their dog, that are struggling, that don't really know what they're doing. They got a dog because they got puppy fever and they wanted to jump right in. The overwhelming majority of these people need to start over. If I were to put a number on it, right? I would say somewhere around eight out of 10 people who apply to my program do not get in. This is important. This is why it requires forethought. However, on the flip side, when you put that forethought in, and this is not research, all of these people who have been rejected have put in research, okay? On the flip side, the people who reach out to me before they've chosen a breeder, before they've put that deposit down on a potential puppy from a litter, the people who haven't even picked out a breed yet, and come to me and say, hey, I know you've done this before. I know you have produced successful dogs with their handlers and had a great time. I'm getting on a little bit of a diatribe here. <laughs> I'll, I'll finish up real quick. We're, we're, we're three quarters of the way done with the article. Those are the people who have success and have the lowest chances of failing. Okay. No service dog program you go to is going to guarantee that your dogs will become a service dog. Anybody who's guaranteeing that doesn't actually know what they're doing. Um, there is no guarantee, but my job is to make sure you have the best chance possible. And that means getting in touch with me before all that jazz and getting puppy fever and picking the first cute puppy that you see and bonding so deeply to that dog. Because no matter what dog I put in front of you, you are most likely going to bond with it. If you don't, okay, cool, let's go find the right dog. But if, if you get the screening tools in, in place, this is why I have a certified assessor. She assesses many different dogs for many different jobs. And it took her over two years of study to become certified. And that is standard. <laughs> and I trust her judgments on what dogs she chooses to bring into my program because they've all been fantastic. So. That being said, um, yeah, it takes about one, one and a half to two years to train a service dog, give or take. It is an undertaking, but it is well worth the investment because it is an investment in you. So, moving on. Trained dog is any kind of working dog. It further blurs the line between what's real and what's fake, which in the long run will only be hurting those who genuinely need service dogs the most. We are 100% dependent on people doing the right thing. That's it. Do the right thing. Yeah, it's all in the honor system. You know, I can look at a dog and I look at a handler out in public and tell if it's a service dog whether or not it's wearing a vest. And I, f and unfortunately, this is not common for the public. They don't look at behavior. They look at the fancy superficial vest that the animal has on. If a dog is barking, excessively pulling, trying to go sniff somebody, eating a bunch of food off the floor, barking excessively isn't under control by the handler. That's a problem. And even if that dog does know a task, that dog, making it a service dog, that dog can still be kicked out of an establishment if it is not behaving well, okay? If it is causing a disruption. 
if it is being unsanitary, eating food off of a table, climbing up onto a restaurant chair, right? They have full ability to kick you out without legal repercussions because you yourself are not doing your job as a handler, which is controlling your dog. If your dog's not trained, service dog pass the public access test. Don't, don't try to pass them off. People don't know who's real and who's not real. And if we keep allowing people to do that, then the laws are gonna change and it's gonna be impossible for people to do their own service dog training, which is what they can do now. They don't have to go to a trainer. If they have a well-mannered dog who is alerting to them, they don't have to spend extra money to get certifications, to get licenses. And if people keep lying about things, then that's what's gonna happen. And so a lot of people won't be able to do this anymore. A hundred percent. She is spitting truth. What's her name? I don't know. She's from Island Dog. That's all I know. She's spitting truth. Okay. This is the old matriarch. She knows shit. She's seen shit. And she knows what's going to happen if people keep faking and having poorly behaved dogs out in public. Yes. Can you train your own service dog? Absolutely. Do you need me? Hell no. Can you do it on yourself? Hell yes. The question is, do you know what you're doing enough that you are so confident that you are 100% going to be able to make this happen, okay? That is the big question. And if you're looking for a good time, good experience, low to no worry, that's where I step in. If you already have all the skills and the understanding and the predictability, you've seen it before, fantastic. Sometimes people get lucky. Most people don't. Sometimes people get lucky, they choose the right dog that works with their disability, that works with them at their speed and their level and has the right temperament. But in my experience, eight out of 10 applicants don't have that ability and they might be overshooting their confidence. They did overshoot their confidence. For more information regarding the different types of working dogs and their various requirements and privileges, head on over to fox54.com. Nixon Norman, Fox 54 News. Well, there we go. That was a fabulous article. I hope you guys enjoyed it as long as all of my little insert inserts that I did there. Um, if you are interested in following me on social media, I am everywhere as at Caitlin's Animals. Instagram, TikTok, Facebook is Caitlin's Animal Training, or you can find me in Pennsylvania under Lehigh Valley Service Dogs if you are interested in applying for our fantastic program, which I'm extremely proud of. It's taken me a couple years to really get everything tweaked to make sure that we are accepting amazing candidates and it's having a great and success successful time so guys thank you so much for joining and i will see you in the next video bye